This was a house that belonged to my husband and it's what's remaining of what was a large estate belonging to his family. I suppose the things that make unique to my interiors are the combination of pattern and that thing of trying it for it not to be too matching. I think the things that make a room comfortable, funny enough, the last thing that makes a room comfortable or a room that people enjoy being in are the colours and the fabrics and all of those things that actually we place quite a lot of importance on. I think the layout is is really the key and I think you could have a room that's really quite ugly where it, that if the layout it works, the room works. This is much more the room you sit in before dinner and chat and this sofa which my husband thinks is uncomfortable I actually find incredibly comfortable because it sort of holds you sitting up whereas a very deep sofa when you're sitting in a dress with a drink is very uncomfortable because you've got to sit up in it and you get no support. And then the other thing once you're sitting is where do you put your drink? You need to have tables close by and how are you going to read your book? So you need to have proper light. So those are the, those I would say are the three key things. And then the rest sort of falls into place. This was the first colour I did, this room. And that was really copied from Jane Ormsby Gore's house in Wales, where she has this green on the walls of her sitting room, which is so pretty. But the main thing I wanted in here was it to feel evolved rather than too coordinated and planned. The next door was quite a fun room to decorate. The wallpaper is this paper I love from a company in LA called Twigs, from Simon Playl. This sofa came from my mum and I recovered it in the cord corduroy, which I love, and I love that it is sort of a soft and comfortable fabric and I love that colour too. I think with corduroy I really like using colours that would be jackets, good, good corduroy jacket colour, rather than prep schoolboy trousers. I bought the cushion at a Battersea Fair and then when I got it here I was like, oh my god, it's huge, and thought, oh well, I'm going to have to cut I'll cut it there and there is the same at the other end. And the other really nice thing about this cushion is it's really soft. So you really, oh, you really sink into it, which is also important. So these, I think that came from Christopher Howe. I bought lots of baskets. I kept on buying because I like a big basket of logs in a room. I think it feels, it feels warm. We didn't really have room to have a dining room. And so quite quickly, it was obvious that, that the kitchen would be the dining room and was quite an easy leap to convince myself that it therefore should be a plain English kitchen because it needed to look really nice at night. So I had these arched windows here. And in fact, I looked to um, Amanda Brooks's house. She had all these arched windows, which must have been garage doors at one point or stable. And she just had put rods up and curtains, which worked so well. So I sort of followed her lead here with that. I think funny enough in the country you really want curtains, there's that thing of drawing curtains and blocking out the weather and the night. So these curtains are unlined. So I chose a fabric, this is from Lee Jofer, which is just like a blanket. And when you do that you want more fabric because you don't want them to feel skinny. So in order to get the feeling of enough you need to probably double your quantity. The dresser I had in my first flat, and it came from William Yeowood on the King's Road. When I came here, it was a perfect fit there. In fact, I had started looking for things to go there, forgetting that I had that. You want the things you have to have some feeling. You want your children to have grown up around them before you move into your forever house and suddenly everything's new and they're in an alien place. Or the flat you lived in in your 20s, that table that might have been your pride possession there might be in a guest bedroom down the road but it's come with you a long way and that's really nice. I have collected a lot of things, mostly I suppose bed linen and suddenly I'm able to make up beds and guest bedrooms that have really nice linens instead of ha having to use a go and spend quite a lot of money on you know something quite ordinary.
Putting fabric on the walls has this very nice quality of sort of sound deadening, so you feel very cocooned when you wake up in a room like this. And I wanted to do that quite old fashioned thing of having everything in the fabric, so the walls and the curtains. Then this bed is made with a blanket. I prefer beds made with a blanket because I don't think beds look very nice made with a duvet. I love really white pressed linen and then it just knocks it off a bit from being too prim. With the smaller rooms you want to make more of a fuss because you want them to be comfortable and this room is often we have to use for a single adult. So I then made it as a single with these big pillows. So I like the over the topness of the colour in here and the pink stripy lampshades and the pink heart sheets and the Welsh blanket and the yellow quilt. I like the madness of the colour in here. Are we nearly finished? <laughs> I think so, yeah.